Hello everybody, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Joystick. In this video we're going to take a look at how you can configure Control My Joystick to work with Age of Empires 2 uh, HD edition. And really this uh, Age of Empires is really it's the scrolling game. You scroll around on the map, you build units, kind of try to take over everything. Typical uh, map scroller kind of application. And we're going to use the uh, 3DX Connection controller uh, to simulate a kind of a keyboard scrolling movements so that's a WSAD you know you press one button to scroll up another button down another left another right and we're gonna do that with a controller and we'll map some of the buttons on the controller as well to do some functions uh, as well so let's see how it's done so first of all I'm just going to um, start up a game here single player good enough okay now I have control my joystick here and I just have the calcium theme running here. So what you see when I do these videos quite often control my joystick will look a little bit different. Uh, I just get sick of looking at the same theme sometimes and I just change it. Oh, all right, so so here in control my joystick, I have created a profile and here is the Age of Empires 2 HD profile. You, know, you can flip around between the different profiles, but we'll, for now we'll just keep it on Age of Empires. Okay. So what we want to do is take a look at the input from the 3D connection controller. So you go to 3DXWare and I have enabled the uh, input from this controller here because this is enabled and I also have enabled smoothing to help control uh, jitters on the hand to smooth that out a bit. And now I'm just going to move the controller puck around a little bit. You can see how there's movement on the different axis and uh, let's see what we have here. I'll just scroll down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll a little bit to the right here or drag it further to the right because I need to get at some information we have right here. And this is how we're gonna set up our digital joystick. Now, first of all, to set this up, I have set uh, the game to run in windowed mode. And that's just the easiest way to configure control my joystick with your game. And once you have it all set up, uh, you know, you can go back to full screen or whatever you like. Otherwise, you know, you have to alt tab out of it all the time. And it's a bit of a pain because that takes can take a little bit of time depending on how fast your computer is. So now let's see. Um, I'm just going to drag this way for now. And I come back into the game and I'm going to click on the game. So any commands that come from control my joystick, uh, including controller commands now, will go into the game and not some other application. And I'm just going to scroll left, scroll down, right, up, and you can combine them so you can go diagonally as well. The scrolling speed is controlled in the game itself. You can adjust uh, scrolling speed in the configuration in the game. So now let's see how we set this up. So I'm going to go back and uh, get the control my joystick screen here. And I have it set so uh, it'll stay on top for now. So uh, I'm able to do some configuration here and see the effects immediately in behind. So uh, now you notice if I click on control my joystick, say on anything in here, this becomes the active or application with focus in the operating system. So if, now if I use the controller, uh, no inputs are going to the game. But if I click on the game and make it active, now it gets the input. So you just have to remember that uh, when you do a setting change control my joystick click on the game first uh, and then try it okay so uh, here we could see the movement and the axis and uh, for example you notice when I scroll to the left and to the right you can see this one moving this is rotation around the y-axis going negative and going positive and if we go down to the default curve group here I could see we have six different axes and we have one configured for rotation around the Y axis, R, Y. Okay, so we have a digital uh, with yes, which means that the digital joystick emulation is enabled. And all that does is it's going to send a stream of A or D characters to the game whenever you move from left to the right. Whenever it moves into negative values, it's gonna send an A Whenever it moves into a positive value, it's going to send a D. So if I double click on this axis, you see the uh, axis curve editor. And you know we don't need to put 
any kind of uh, curve here you could do this uh, but since we're not using the analog part of this controller um, what I'm really interested is in the dead zone you could reset it and just set the dead zone at and I think I had it set to 20 here which is pretty good for this game um, it just means when you have a bit of a dead zone is that if you are lightly touching the controller it's not going to really move anything around in the game uh, so you have to move your hand a little bit more for anything to happen and that works pretty good for me okay so dead zone of 20 now we'll click on digital and you can see i have it enabled and the negative value uh, on this axis will generate a stream of a's being sent to the game and positive will be d the down delay is 20 milliseconds or 21 thousandths of a second so it's going to press uh, if, if you've gone negative on this axis it's going to send an a hold it down for 20 milliseconds then release it then send another a hold it down 20 milliseconds and release it and the amount of delay in between key presses uh, between the different a's that are being sent uh, is set to zero which is usually good um, okay so i'll hit okay here and we could see that we have the rotation on the x-axis set to W and S. So x-axis uh, goes this way on your controller. So that's forwards, backwards. And you could see Rx is changing values. And you see a bunch of these change values you know, when you're moving it around. That's because you're actually touching all the axes quite often at the same time. You could disable these uh, axes if you don't want to see those inputs. Um, but they, they really don't hurt anything since we don't have anything mapped to them. Okay, so let's uh, double click on this and we can see that uh, I have a, a W and an S uh, mapped here. And I have a dead zone of 200. And I can go back here and set this to 200 as well. Oh, not here, right here. Okay. So that means you have to move the controller a little bit before you get any kind of uh, inputs happening. You know, a good way to test this, if you like, is to just bring up, uh, say, Notepad. Okay, got a Notepad over here, and uh, hold them. You need to click a Notepad and now move your controller. I'm going to move it to the left. A to the right is D. You know, we put them in as capitals, but they come out as. Uh, lowercase like this that's this kind of it's the way it works with the windows api calls I go up and i go down so i'll quite often configure with notepad first before i commit to doing it in the game especially if a game is really uh kind of a um, you know a sluggish running thing that it takes a long time to have to uh swap back and forth and so on okay i see i'm being invaded by other guys here so oh, that's okay this is the demo so now let's try this. So if I click on the game, I can scroll to the left, right, down, and up. All right. So let's see what else we can do. Now in, in this particular game, you know, you have villagers, which kind of, you know, they wander around, they do stuff for you. And sometimes you just find them doing absolutely nothing and it's a pain in the ass. So uh, one of the main functions of the game is go into the next idle villager. And I've mapped this to a key on the controller. And it is the number four key here which is this one right up here. Hope you can see that. Okay. So uh, if I was to scroll away and then press the four button, it takes me right back and shows me a, a uh, villager who is just uh, taking some time off. Okay, so uh, I'll set this villager to go do something. We'll chop down a tree. So... Now we can also go to the town center. So I use another button, the fit button, to do this as well. So it's a macro that is triggered with a pressing of the fit key. And that'll press the H key on the keyboard. You see the idle villager one pressed just the period. And here, this one pressed the H. You can go to the keyboard mappings uh, up here. Options. Hotkeys. And there is a lot of hotkey configurations in this game. Uh, but uh, you have some very basic ones. Um, let's see if I want to go to unit commands. Next, idle villager right here. It's got the period. 
Okay, so this is where you set it in this particular game. So let's try setting this one. Now we have this one called go to town center because usually some chaos is happening back home uh, at your town center. When you're scrolled halfway across the map, you'll get a message and you want to be able to go there quickly. So I've set this button here, uh, the fifth button, and I'm just going to press it. So it'll snap us right back to the town center. There it is. Let's see what it's like to set this. Uh, so I'm going to, um, that's the H, a lowercase H. I'm going to delete this. Let's recreate that, one that takes you back to the town center by pressing H. So you go new, give it any uh, name that you want. Now, how do you want to trigger it? Well, you could trigger it with uh, a key. So um, now when you press a button on the keyboard, or what, sorry, when you press a button on the controller, it shows up in two places here and here on this dialogue that popped up and you just press the button that you want and keep it pressed and then hit OK and it captures it. Okay and let's tell it to send a lowercase h. Okay so let's give it a try. I'll just scroll away, press this button Bam, right back to the town center. Okay, well, let's say, uh, you know, you want to use voice commands. Well, that's easy too. I could create a separate one with a voice command or I could just add another trigger to this. Uh, and either trigger then will trigger this macro to run. So uh, let's see. I have a phrase and it will do the exact same thing. So this is going to fire whenever these two triggers are detected. So uh, now I've set up my voice here. So I'll go input voice enabled and I have a prefix of computer, which means I have to say the word computer before uh, it'll recognize the command. That's optional. So if I go here to voice, it shows uh, what the uh, uh, available voice commands are. We only have one, so let's give it a try. I'll just scroll away here. Okay. Computer, go to town center. Okay. And, oh, I see. It fired, but I had the uh, focus on this, uh, oops, on uh, control my joystick. Let's try it again. This time I'll click on the game. Computer, go to town center. Bam, and you're back. Okay, and you know that focus problem goes away. Um, once you're done could, uh, configuring to control my joystick, you could set your game back to full screen if you like, and then you just don't have that problem because it always has focus as long as the game is up. So, you know, you could set any kind of, uh, of uh, commands that you like on the joystick. Um, you could set any commands you like like on the controller and, and its buttons or voice commands and uh, and it's really flexible. So uh, I generally find this is more comfortable than using the keyboard to move around. So uh, let's see, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. It's kind of how I used to do it. If you wanna move diagonally, you gotta hold two buttons down. Whereas on the controller, it just acts like a joystick. All right, so that's it. That's how you set up Age of Empires 2 with Control of My Joystick, a digital joystick emulation. Have fun.